Okay, so let's move on to exploring the free Artos code a little bit. So what we'll do is, uh, we'll open up a tab and simply type free Artos, um, free Artos source code. Yeah, so let's just type free Artos and this shows up. So we go to free Artos's official website and then look for, you know, GitHub. So let's go to GitHub and once we are there, we'll see that there is free Artos kernel and free Artos. So what we want is the free Artos kernel. We don't want free Artos. Free Artos is essentially the kernel. And let's actually go and take a look at that. So it is free Artos kernel plus, uh, you know, some other goodies or libraries that uh, uh, Amazon engineers have, you know, put. So Amazon had acquired or bought free Artos and the free Artos plus uh, is essentially their extension li library support and uh, ex like the IoT libraries that they have provided. We are interested in free Artos kernel and the kernel is essentially what has all the goodies for us. Uh, so if you notice, there is like timer, tasks, uh, queues, uh, lists. So all of this is available to us. And this is what essentially we are going to integrate into our source code. So the idea is, and I should also explain as to why am I choosing this way versus uh, another way, which is why can't I just take an example out of free RTOS and then just boot that? Well, the problem there is uh, we can very well do that. But once we do that, you will never know what is the underlying thing that is enabling the free RTOS kernel. And my intention with this course is uh, to precisely show you how the free Artos kernel kicks in, how you can do a port, and what are the minimal files you need to enable the scheduler. Okay, so free Artos kernel is what we were after, but let's go back to their main website. And uh, I need to click this button a few times. Okay, so then when we look for, uh, when we go and look at the documentation, let's see, beginner's guide. So there, okay, fundamentals, somewhere there is mention of the port and is it the quick start guide well i forget but you can by the way also take a look at what the plus is what the core is and things of those nature right um i'm looking for documentation so let's continue our hunt overview yes free artos kernel quick guide um get started free artos books is what I want and free Artos reference manual mastering the free Artos hands-on tutorial so I'll go with this mm, I'll simply click on this let's see so the reason we are again exploring all of this is just so that you know from where I am mm, uh, you know where my knowledge is coming from and that's from these documentation and also the fact that you know I've worked on free Artos way back in time um, so I have some familiarity. Okay, so we have like a lot of examples here, creating a queue and all of that. Uh, we'll come to that later. What we want to do is see how to port. And somewhere there is a port. Uh, free Artos port. Very nice. So somewhere in this, it explains that, hey, you should have your own uh, source code such that the CPU boots up. And once the CPU boots up, what you're supposed to do is start to cherry pick some of the files from the free Artos kernel and integrate those into our compilation. So somewhere in this uh, documentation, it says that. And uh, um, okay, let's see combination, blah, whatever. Um, yeah, so it is talking about a lot of different things. Yes, in this section, it talks about the most common files and the things that we'll need to port, right? So these are like the important files. Uh, you know, they talk about these here, which is five to six important files. And as you will see towards the, uh, you know, through the journey of the course, well, it is fewer files than that. And uh, okay, so this document is then essentially guiding. And what they do is they say, hey, you know, just use a demo. Uh, project that we have built and then start from there okay um yeah they are guiding on all of this and 
also how the scheduler starts all of that so my knowledge about free autos kernel porting is coming from this document right so let me then go back and uh, uh, let me go back and go to the github uh, let's actually briefly ex explore free autos kernel and then free autos and then what is there within it let's see okay source and well looks like the source points to free autos kernel right so long story short then free autos itself has within its source and the source is essentially clone of free autos kernel so even though within this directory you won't see free autos kernel well it is called source and source as a directory is pulling content out of the free autos kernel and hence free autos kernel is the actual crux of free autos that was the whole point okay so this is what we need then i'm going to uh, take this and uh, uh, you know git clone this or download this so let me then first copy this url go to our code spaces here and what i'm going to do is we have all of this so do a make clean and uh, we have our few files and i'm going to do few adjustments now so first thing that i do is i want our source code to live separate so i'm going to call port create a directory called port and then select all the files uh, our source files and move them within port right? it says hey do you want to move it within port i say yes and it is done this readme file i'll keep that outside so now all our bare metal boot related stuff is within um, the port directory right that's a good one and now if i do an ls you'll see there is port and there is readme great now i do git clone and paste that url of free atos kernel to get the kernel source code and i hit the return key it's going to take few minutes or well few seconds to few minutes and once it is done we should have the free atos kernel source code here right so we have the free atos kernel source code now again the kernel source code is very noisy it has too many files too many directories and our mission going forward is to see which of these files are important and why fair and in fact you know how do you even go about including the free atos functions or functionality in our bare metal port so what we are now going to do uh, let's pause here but what we'll do in the next lecture is explore uh, those files and then start to include those into our compilation process fine all right so with this i'll see you in the next one